Hello everybody and oh, welcome back to another episode here on the Hermitcraft Amplified server. Today we're going to be working in the base doing the story system. It's that time, it's awesome. I've been waiting for this for so long, cannot wait to get started here. And I do want to mention quickly, we are on 1.8. We're not on 1.9, no no no, it would not be a good idea to update to that. If you didn't know, those snapshots are experimental, lots of things are going to be changed, they're very buggy. And the first major bug was if you have a sign or a book in your world, the game would eventually crash and corrupt the world. Strange, strange bug, and that is why we are not going to be upgrading to 1.9. So at some point in the future, I'm hoping there's going to be a stable snapshot for us to update to, but it doesn't look like that's going to come anytime soon. So uh, don't expect to be seeing us on the snapshots uh, anytime soon, which is sort of what I just said. <laughs> yes, anyway, let's go down and have a look at the storage system. I've got a lot of work to do here because this thing is going to be very big. It's going to use a lot of redstone materials and a lot of time is going to go into this. So we're going to build an automated system right here in the middle for all of this. However, I am sort of debating, do we actually want two automated systems? One on this side, one on that side over there and maybe use the middle for something else because we are limiting ourselves to a certain amount of chests by doing so and we'll probably need more in the long run. So that's my first thing to do is to figure out if we can actually fit this thing in um, with more because the way that we've set this back it means there's lots of blocks sort of awkwardly in and around the area and that means I've got to clear out the space back here as well because there's hardly any space to build this thing. This storage system is going to be epic, it's going to be massive and I cannot wait to get going. So I've got to do a little bit of preparation work here and then get some materials together. Oh no, he's coming to get me! Oh my god, we better run away before he hits me. <laughs> What's going on? It's those vines, it's those sneaky vines. Man, they're freaking out the zombie AI. <laughs> Alright, so I've been doing my resource gathering, getting prepared. This thing, I think it's actually like not as big as I sort of thought it would be in my mind. I've been watching the tutorial over, it's very well explained. By the way, this whole thing was put together by Nembomb MC. So a while back on my live stream, I tried to take on this storage challenge. Um, I haven't really talked too much about it, I'm kind of assuming you'll know where we're at with this. There is this way of storing items in a chest where you basically like fill up every single slot like that. Then if a hopper's pointing into the back of it, it's only going to put in an item if it has a place to go. And so by using that we can create a filter system out of the chest that the items go into. And it means you can just filter so many more things in a small space than with traditional systems. So on my live stream he messaged me and said that he think he had a really cool idea for how to do this. I saw some of the initial stuff that he did and it looked ever so good and that's why I've been waiting for it. So down in the description box you can find a link to his channel and his tutorial. I highly recommend going and checking it out and of course I'll remind you again at the end of the video. But check it out, i got tons of materials here. I think this is way more than we need. Look at that, loads and loads of stuff. It's awesome gathering up all this redstone because it's all going to be put to use. And it's going to be, yeah, just awesome. So we're going to dump this down, well, in a chest around the back there. Actually, one of the first things that we need to do is break off all of the chests. So I wish I'd have brought um, my axe with me. In fact, I'm going to bring an ender chest down with me because I'm forever going back and forth between the two. And this is good to store a few items in. So one of the first things we're actually going to do is remove some of the chests. And by the way, I decided what we're going to do in the long run is um, is just build the one right here for today and then if we do need to expand it in the future we have a bunch of options available I was looking at this little bit right here this is what gets in the way because around the back here if you want to build this you need um, hoppers in this space right here and then back here is where a row of redstone blocks and piston goes and these blocks get in the way so if we change the design a little bit move the water forward then we would have enough space to build one on that side and one on that side but actually as I said I don't think this is like the biggest of builds it's just a little bit on the expensive side <laughs> and and so what we'll do is put it here for today and if in the future we're like we really need more space to store items then we can just tear the thing out maybe put one on either side or maybe even like have it so it's hooked up to one on the opposite side I don't know uh, but the options are endless so we're gonna dump all of this stuff in here and then we're going to take some of it back out because I started off by taking out the hoppers. The first thing that we need to do here is get all of the hoppers like so. This is how we're going to be sending uh, the items in. And if it's not 100% clear what we're doing, the items will drop in at the top. They'll go for each hopper because each time it travels through a hopper, it's going to check in front of it when it's locked by a, uh, a redstone signal. So that way it'll be able to go... Um, into the chest. Now when we're building this and we want to test it and get it working, all these chests are empty which means 
Um, the items, whatever item there is, will just go into an empty chest. So we need to start off by removing a whole bunch of the chests that we've already placed, which is no problem at all. So we'll get all of these hoppers in place, remove all of these, and then we can move on to the next step. And of course, some of the chests have items in. I forgot about that. <laughs> and now I made a mess out of my inventory. I can sense it already. This sorter is going to be absolutely amazing. And it's these redstone blocks right here that get pushed back and forth. And when they do so, they sort of lock and unlock the hoppers, which gives them time to look in the chests in front of them. So we're going to install that bit by bit. And I'm still not 100% sure on where I'm supposed to place everything, but I'm sort of going through the video, doing it a little bit at a time, double checking, making sure I'm getting everything right. So there was this problem, which I didn't have a solution to when I was playing around with this myself. And I like this. The solution is ever so simple. Um, and it is just to kind of shift things over to the right. So let me explain. When we take items back up to the top to go down and be sorted again, we need to sort of go from here, from this row, into the next row. When it comes back up again, it's got to go um, into the next row once more. And the problem with this is everything kind of shifts over to the side. So, for example, our first row is going to come up right here. If I could place it facing upwards in the right bit, because we're going to use droppers to bring them back up. And again, another amazing thing about this is that the redstone blocks that shift back and forth to lock the hoppers are also going to power the droppers as well to bring the items back up, which is just so elegant and brilliant. Um, but anyway, you can see this one goes down and around to the side. So we come up from this column and then we go down this one. So the next one's going to come up here and we want it to go down on the left. So if we put in the hoppers like this, you can see that we can do exactly that. So then we put in another one. Once again, the hoppers are going to go to the left and then we've got to do it once more. And here's where things get tricky because the next one, you'd probably want the dropper to go where we are right now. Do I have any cobblestone or something like that? I do. Let's quickly go over here. Um, except now we can't really come back around into this space because this one's used all of it. And the idea that Nembomb had was to actually swap it over. So the next time we do that pattern is going to be down at the bottom. And then with a gap in the middle, we can repeat uh, the pattern. That sort of I know how it works, it's kind of hard to explain, but now um, they're just going to go straight over because this swapping of one lane to the next is then going to happen on the bottom. So we can have two sets of droppers facing upwards that are four wide, and that way we don't have to worry about that problem, which is really cool. Except this one is three wide. So possibly I've done something wrong here. Actually, my system is going to be seven blocks wide, and the one that he did was eight. So that's why it's going to be three on the end there. Yes, look at that. It's seven wide, not eight. Okay, so that makes sense. And that's how we're going to do it. Get out of my base. What are you doing spawning in here? <laughs> it should be should be just fine in this area. Maybe I haven't put down enough torches. So this is a lot easier to understand once you see the hoppers in at the bottom. So we know that these ones weave over. You can see it'll go up, it'll go across, then weave down on this side. Then this is just a straight line, as the other hoppers are right here, because they get shifted over by one at the top. So when that one... Uh, so when the items go up this bit, it's going to shift across into the middle. So what we need to do is then put it across by one. We're going to do that by pointing into that one there. Then the next one will point into the next row like this. And then the third one should go right here. Now the thing that I'm wondering is that his design was one block wider than mine is. And the way that I've set it up here, there wouldn't be room for another one because then it would go underneath two hoppers, right? Let's say this is coming around to the next bit. You'd have a hopper there, you'd have a hopper here as well, and that wouldn't work. So I think I've done something wrong, but at the same time, this would appear to work as well. So anyway, I don't think that matters too much. It appears to be working for us. So now I've kind of wired up some of the next step and cleared out a little bit of space over here. So what we've done is wired up the pistons. And this is where things get tricky, because after this point, what we have to do is build a clock to manage the whole thing. So we could say, as of right now, it's sort of finished, minus the clock. Um, so if we have a look at this, we have, let's see, this bit of redstone right here powers this piston and this piston or this line. And then if we follow it around to the other side, and we're going to have to do a bit of jumping and weaving here, aren't we? <laughs> um, you'll see that it powers these two on the opposite end. Now this took me a while to do following this video. I kept making this silly mistake of repeating the pattern uh, the same on either side, which didn't make any sense because where well, you've got three that push in this direction, you've got three that need to push back, so they're on the outside on this side. But anyway, I got there in the end, and so now what we have is basically a wall of redstone blocks that get pushed back and forth, and they do that, I think, going from... like, they cover all of these blocks. 
and then they come out by an extra one. Actually, it looks like I've done it wrong there because that doesn't have a redstone block there, and that needs to have a redstone block. <laughs> Um, yeah, I'm going to have to go back and double check this stuff. It's starting to get a little bit finicky, but anyway, uh, we would have a clock that sends a signal in, and what it does is it powers this side over here first, then it goes down the opposite side, and then after a little delay it will go up here around to that side, and then another delay to this side. I can't help but feel there's something wrong with that, because we go, let's see, we're powering those two, then their counterparts, actually no, that should be fine. So if we stand back here, can hear a bunch of clicking noise. That's all of the uh, dispensers. No, droppers getting activated. And yes, look at this. I have done it wrong because there needs to be redstone blocks there. So all of this needs to be pushed back over by one block. So I'm definitely getting something wrong here. What we've got to keep in mind is I'm building a design that's one block shorter than the one he suggested was the maximum. So if I don't have any more space to expand it, then I've done something wrong, but it still appears to work. So now what I've done is push this all back by one block over here. We've got this extra row of redstone blocks. Now I'm pretty sure you have to have it exactly like this. You can see um, if we were to put a redstone block here, we would start bub powering some of the pistons. That's no good. Um, so when these all get pushed across that way, it means that this block is going to be replaced with a redstone block, which will never be a problem on this end. You can see it's already there. It's going to get pushed this way first and then pushed back. But the thing is, these blocks are going across by 12, and that is the push limit of a piston. So how you got an extra one in here, I'm not quite sure. I'm just probably doing something really silly and not realizing it. But anyway, let's just give it a quick test then. So we press this here. It is going to um, power them all in order. There you go, they go back and forth. And it looks a bit off there. I think the way they get powered might be wrong as well because they don't end up going back to the way they were a moment ago. Or maybe they don't need to. But anyway, we're getting we're getting there slowly. And now I've got to try and build the clock and then we're going to start doing some testing. But we've done the bulk of it now, which is good. We're getting close now to having this thing up and running. It's been a long, long day for me. I've spent my time doing all sorts of things, but I've also been trying to get this sort of figured out and set up. And I finally managed to do it. It's taken a bit of time, but I've recreated what's in the video. So over here, you remember we had that piston with the gravel on to create a short tick pulse. Well, I've replaced that with all of what we actually need. So this thing right here is going to do the same thing as the piston, just create a two tick pulse with the output of this over here, which is a clock. So this clock's going to create a kind of sequence so that this thing fires at the optimal rate, if that makes sense. And then this clock is also controlled by another one down here. This is where things get a little bit uh, confusing, I guess, but it is kind of straightforward, so bear with me. Um, this clock is controlled by some other redstone, and it comes all the way back over here, where we have a comparator sticking out of this dropper. Now, I haven't hooked up the hoppers for this yet, and I think we've got to sort of run them around the side here. However, we've got to avoid other bits of redstone so that the hoppers don't get locked. But that's where our input items are going to come through from, and they're going to go into this dropper first of all. So this is where the system starts. When there's items in there, it means the system's ready to go, and they're ready to be sorted. So we get a signal that is then transferred down into this redstone, which activates this clock. Now, it activates it in a way where the one up here runs until this line is turned off right here. So if you have a lot of items coming into the system, it's going to be able to account for that. And it's not until that thing is empty again that then it kind of unlocks this right here. And then that has enough time for your item that's in the dropper to get all the way around the system to the end, into the last chest. So what we've got to do next is a little timing test to see how long it actually takes for an item to get from here all the way around to the other side. And uh, when we do that, then we can turn on this right here, because at the moment it's got no items in. So that's what we're going to go, go around and do at the front boo, 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 <laughs> uh, right now. And uh, if that test goes smoothly, then this thing is technically finished, I do believe, which is pretty incredible. So we are about to do this. Yes. And then I just remembered, uh, no, we're not quite ready yet. What we need to do, and hopefully I can do this. <laughs> can't quite look through the gap. We need to right click. Yes. <laughs> okay, we did it. That chest has been connected to the system. That's the only one that's connected to the sorting system. So what we're doing now is a test to get the time for how long it takes for the item to leave here to go all the way um, through the system into the final chest over here, meaning that everything would have technically have been sorted. And then that time is going to control um, the clock system at the back, which is kind of what I half explained a second ago. Anyway, we're going to jump up here, put a lever on there, and permanently turn this on. 
Yes, that is noisy. <laughs> the whole thing is going to be very noisy, by the way. Pistons and dispensers, but it's going to be awesome. So if we come around the front here, we're now kind of ready to do this test. So we're going to put a single item into this chest right here. And then we're going to hit the lever. And it's going to unpower this line. And that means the items can flow down into this chest right here. The same way that our hopper clock timer at the back would flow. And that's the way uh, we figure out how long it takes to get from one end to the other. So right now, it's going through the system. I could possibly like right-click on a hopper and wait to see it go through. Which is something that I might do. I think I'm going to sit here for a minute and just see if I see it go by. It didn't work. <laughs> I'm now looking through tons of droppers. Hoppers, is it here? Is it there? Maybe it's down here. No, can't find it. Where is the item? Uh, then I noticed that there isn't a repeater here. So how did it get out of the first bit? <laughs> I don't even know. Maybe it's still locked over here somewhere. It's a little bit silly. Um, I don't know if it ever actually got to this one. Maybe it is locked over there. So yeah, it didn't work. It took a long time and I realised, hey, something's wrong here. I've got this horrible feeling, though, it's going to take me a really long time to figure out where it went. Just because, yeah. <laughs> so eventually I found the problem. No, I didn't find the problem. I found where the item was. It was somewhere down here. By the way, got a little bit of morning voice going on. And I thought, wow, that has been on for such a long time. And the furthest it got to is this place over here, right? That means you have to leave it for on for a really long time for it to get the whole way around. So I'd done a little test. Must have been not even a quarter of the time that I ran it for before. And that's just by turning on this over here. And it is stuck in this one down here now. So eventually I found it. And you can see that it's staying here. It's not being moved. And that's kind of worrying. I think there's something bugging out these droppers, which means that they don't push the item up. Because both times I've looked, they've been in the droppers. It's been the ones down near the bottom. And I don't know. I don't know. what That doesn't really make too much sense to me. I mean, this thing is getting powered, right? Maybe there's like a chunk border here and it means that, I don't know, the powering or the timing of it isn't quite the same. So let's have a look. doesn't appear to be a chunk border right here anyway. And yeah, and it's just kind of stuck there, which is really worrying because I don't know how to diagnose this. And I don't know what to do next. So I am just going to have to kind of scratch my head and figure out where we take it from here. So I've found more problems, but this is kind of a good thing because we're learning more about this setup right here. So, first of all, I've sort of found a solution for what's going on down here. You can see that this will then power um, the dropper. So when you have the bit of redstone like this, it powers the dropper. When it's like that, it won't do. So for some reason, um, a repeater powering any of these three droppers over here, it just won't accept it. Although I haven't actually tried this one, which is where it's stuck at the moment. So why don't we do that together? And I just take the power from over here. It means it'll be on a different timing, but it'll help it get round um, anyway. So it shouldn't be too much of an issue. Let's turn that on and see what it does. This is very noisy. Be aware. See, repeater doesn't help. So let's go and change this. So watch what happens when we put down a piece of redstone. Off it goes. And the next time we'll see it, it'll probably be over here. Now it gets round to the next bit really fast, actually. And then I notice something. So let's come back to that in a second. Um, it ended up in that hopper over there. I opened it, I saw the bit of dirt, and I went, okay, at last, it's gone all the way around. That's a good sign. And then I thought, wait a minute, we had a chest over here for that to go into. So now it's going um, past or through all of these hoppers too quickly, I think, because it didn't go into this chest. Has it arrived yet? No, it's stuck somewhere else. And it should be stuck right here. And it's not, which is worrying. Oh, because it's so inconsistent. I reckon there's other places where it slows down and gets caught up. And at the moment, I can't find out, you know, where that is. But I have noticed one thing. Let's turn this clock off. <laughs> On uh, Nembon's... Yeah, Nembon. I, I get that wrong every time. I, th I think to say Nembob, <laughs> but it's not. But and. On Nembom's um, video, it looks like his pistons are firing on a one-tick pulse. The thing is, I sort of double-checked all the redstone here. All of this is correct, but this bit would change it to a one-tick pulse, right? And I've got a feeling that might help us a little bit here. That might also solve the problem with the droppers. Okay, so that really looks like it's now creating a one-tick pulse. However, these would then extend that to a two-tick pulse. <laughs> so I'm really not sure. Um... And I don't want to play around with it too much, but a one-tick pulse would mean I think this gets pushed over quicker. 
In fact, it wouldn't. It would just sort of push it over and retract quickly. Because nothing's going to change the speed of the blocks moving, which is the bit that I think's slowing things down. Does that make sense? Like, all of this is based on the movement of a block. As it goes across, it's going to uh, temporarily unpower the hopper and then power it again. And so it doesn't matter what tick you put into a piston, because all it can do is push it. <laughs> yeah, that is actually some logical stuff right there. Anyway, it looks like I can't find my dirt block, which means there's probably another little bit of the system that's acting up. Oh, and i got to check all of these again. It was actually just down here, which kind of makes sense. I do wonder, though, when we were playing around with the powering of this, did we actually do that if it got there yet or not? Yet or not. <laughs> um, but we can just check it again quickly. So let's go turn this thing on. Right, so it gets powered once. I don't see it in there. <laughs> and it's still stuck in the bottom. Brilliant. Well, at least we've sort of narrowed down the problem a little bit, it seems like. It's just these three bits here. So they need an alternative way of being powered, basically. And how I'm going to do that, I'm not sure, because they don't like being powered by repeaters. What they might not mind being powered by is repeaters like this, with then blocks like that, and I need to eat. I'll play around with it a little bit. Hopefully we can figure something out. So we have got a world of problems here. It's quite frustrating. I don't know why these droppers over here are just being an absolute pain. So, kind of figured out that you need redstone wire to power them, not the... Um, Repeater. The repeater will move from the bottom up by one, but then it won't power this one to do the one above it. Um, so it gets stuck in that one. That was in the one below a moment ago. So if we use regular redstone, then it will work just fine. Did that go into... That might have gone into the hopper. <laughs> um, but yeah, but then it needs to point directly into it. So that's okay. I mean, maybe we'll find a way to wire that up, right? Thing is, when we put it in here, we'll go, we'll go and turn this thing on. It now gets stuck in the hoppers above, which it wasn't doing before. And I mean droppers. <laughs> I'll probably say those words the wrong way around a lot here. Um, so now you see it fired a few times. It gets stuck, is it, in this one here? Or did this time it actually go all the way around? No, now it's still in here. So in other words, it seems to be extremely unreliable. Although um, I'd had a repeater next to it this time. And I guess that would sort of diagonally power that one. We may have to come up with some sort of alternate design for the back here, which is not something I really want to do right now. <laughs> put a lot of time into this already and no and now it's just sitting here so it's inconsistent as well you know I've run this test already with this same setup put an item in here and it traveled up a couple of blocks and then it stopped so at this point I uh, I think it's time to call it a day on this project so chaps it doesn't always go the way that you planned I really wanted this thing to be done today I can't tell you how much I am disappointed right now because I wanted to get this thing up and running. I wanted to have all of our you know, items sorted out in this area right here. And all of my time has gone into uh, trying to fix this thing. And it feels like we're close. feels like we just need a solution for that wall of droppers. But it is acting ever so strange, which kind of worries me. Uh, because if it's inconsistent, if we fix it, it may not mean it's going to always be fixed. But anyway, we will not give up on our storage system. Next episode, I got a collab planned, and the episode after that is episode 400. So get hyped. We've got loads of things planned for the future, and I'm hoping we can get this done as well. But that's going to be it for this episode. I do hope you have enjoyed it. I had a good time putting this thing together. It's just a shame it didn't quite work out. But anyway, that is it from me this episode of Hermitcraft. So as always, thank you very much for watching, and I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.